love is love this song. No, no, it's a beat. There's no words to it. It's not a song yet. <laughs> it's just a beat. It's a beat. You composed this beat. I did. For the Cling series. I did. And I remember when you sent the episode to me to review mm. before it went up. Uh, I'm going through the episode. I got to the scene where this <laughs> beat, beat is playing. Right. And I was like, oh, no, he didn't try to slip a bop in the middle of the scene that I hadn't yeah. heard before. So the funny thing is, I knew that. I knew you hadn't heard this, uh-huh. and I knew as soon as you heard it, uh-huh. you were going to claim it for Absolutely. yourself. Absolutely. That's how the Absolutely. soundtrack actually gets made. <laughs> she hears things I'm working on, and then she claims it. She said, I want that as mine. I've already started writing to it. I've already started writing to it. God already gave Don't me the words for it. God, Do not give that God away. God already gave me the words for it. <laughs> so... The Cling series, we should say for those who don't know what we are talking about. Oh, right, right, right. We uh, co-star in the Cling series, which is a web series. Yeah. And you are the the Uh, sound everything. Right, I'm the co-star. I'm Sean. Guys, go watch the Cling series if you don't. Mm -hmm. It's it's so good. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, I play Sean. And what's your name in real life? Oh, my name is Lamont Blackshire, but everybody calls me Spec, so you guys, you know, call me Spec. And I'm Kim Cash Tate. Say all in three names. You have to say all three yeah, names. Yeah. <laughs> or you will disappear. <laughs> Spontaneously combust. But uh yeah, I, I um play Sean mm-hmm. and I also do the sound design, which is um a lot of people don't know. Um every footstep has to be placed, the bedroom noise, the background noise, all that has to be authored. So I do all the sound design for that. Mm-hmm. Um I also um score and compose the score for um yeah, all the, the background cool. stuff and then um um, there's a soundtrack, of course. So mm-hmm. I compose the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And in composing the soundtrack, um, which is another story, God had Kim start singing. And Kim is singing on all the soundtrack songs. So I'm her producer. Yes. So right? Speck is my co-star in the series. Mm-hmm. He's also my music producer. Yeah. He's my now manager. Yes. Yeah. Brother in Christ. Brother in Christ. Absolutely. He's family. We are here at my house. We actually have the season two finale that is premiering tonight. Mm-hmm. And for the for the first episode and the finale episode, we like to get together as a cast and crew and have fun and right, right. do IG lives and all that. So he's here for that. And so he's family. Right. And he's also a friend. We are friends. Ooh. I'm I'm a I'm a friend. <laughs> they do realize that they're watching this. I'm a man and you're a woman. Right. Are we right. allowed to be friends? Are we allowed to be friends? Like, it's just, it's just crazy. Like, why is that taboo? So Mm -hmm. all of these other things would cause us to actually work together really closely and be together like all the the time, right? Studio. All the work on the Uh, playing series, going to locations to shoot. All of that traveling, Mm -hmm. uh, going over lines. Mm -hmm. All of that's fine. Mm -hmm. Management, Mm -hmm. uh, ministry, brother, you know, doing all that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But you say friends. Mm -hmm. Red flag goes up. Red flag goes up. So, Mm -hmm. um, but we believe that's what called God called us to do. Yeah, uh, it was totally, totally of the Lord. And we're, right. we call this podcast Gospel Friendship, and we'll right. get more into that title. It was a deliberate title just because it's all of God, by God, it, it's in Christ. It's absolutely of God. God did this, I promise, because many times it just wasn't working. We were just like, it, we were just like I, don't, I don't like you that it much. It wasn't working. We wanted to kill each other. Right, because right. Too much was being required. Too right. much is required in a gospel friendship. <laughs> that's like sacrifice and my gosh, whatnot. That's it. So that's um, its own episode. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we'll but, get to that. But um, yeah, yeah. So we're doing a podcast right together on gospel friendship, not just male female friendship, but because that's what we are. Mm-hmm. We're going to hit that taboo issue head on, right? And um, hopefully break some chains. Hopefully, break but some chains. um. I got the idea for the podcast. I should talk about that a few months ago. This has been um, many months in the making. Yeah. Uh, I saw a post on Instagram from a woman who posted a picture of her husband and uh, another woman who, a sister in Christ. And she said that they do ministry together. <laughs> and she was talking about um, the benefits of their friendship. And she said, why right. is this uh, controversial? And so, of course, there were many comments and mm-hmm. Someone posted in the comments, have you read this book? Why can't we be friends? I had never heard of the book. I downloaded it and started reading the very first line, talked about the taboo nature of male and female friendships. So I'm reading the book and I'm like, this is some of the stuff we talk about. So I 
told Speck, I said, I am reading this book and they are talking about the very things. The author is talking about the right. very things that we talk about. We talk about. Well, so she calls me about, you know, about this book. And I'm first of all, I'm relieved because I'm just like, mm -hmm. right. OK, so finally, like yeah. somebody else realizes this is this this taboo nature is mm -hmm. is like off. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's always been an issue with me because would that mean automatically 50% of the population of the world that I'm not to communicate with at, at well, all? And that's, that's <laughs> one of the things that caused us to want to do this podcast. We right. really felt like the Lord was moving in our hearts to, um, to talk about this openly, to, to have the conversations that we were having then right. and have had right. to talk about it openly. And cause it's, cause, you know what? Cause it's the ministry. Okay. And we'll get into this, but the ministry that has come out of this friendship, mm -hmm. God is absolutely in it. And it's just crazy that I mean, to think about how much ministry is not being done because of our traditions. Right. Right. And how much how much healing and deliverance is not happening because of our <laughs> traditions, because the Bible clearly tells us in the body of Christ, you know, all the one another verses to encourage one another, to pray for one another, to bear one another's mm -hmm. burdens, to love one another. And for some reason, we read into that only woman to woman and man to man, that right. there can't be a friendship between a man and a mm -hmm. woman where you are encouraging one another and you are nope. bearing one another's burdens. Nope. Um, so we have these traditions <laughs> that have that have superseded the word of God. And we said, you know, let's pray about this. Let's see what the Lord is saying because we both felt like the Lord was saying, do right. So I prayed and prayed again. And then when I actually thought about doing the podcast saying that we are friends, I prayed again. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about what everybody I know would say, all the people would say, and I prayed again. But then um, God really brought something to me and I, it sent me over the top, which is, I just thought about the miracle that has come and the miracles that have come through this friendship mm -hmm. personally and mm -hmm. with my family, just mm -hmm. and, and my kids, just, it's been miraculous and it happened through the friendship. Yeah. So I, I knew that it was a green light. Yeah. And um, of course, I prayed and prayed and prayed as well, because part of the unorthodox nature of this friendship, we're not just a man and woman, but I'm a married woman. So mm -hmm. so I had to consider Super my married. husband. I had to talk to my husband. And of course, my husband, no spec. And we will yeah. get into like how we met and all of that. But um, so I had a lot of considerations, but still kept coming back to this um, just strong urging from the Lord that this is a topic that needed to be talked about mm -hmm. that. Um, that that it could actually set some people free, right? And it could actually, you know, we always talk about this epidemic of loneliness that's out there. Um, that's huge. But, but would we say that half the population you can't you can't befriend because <laughs> no, no. <laughs> they are the opposite sex? It just it, right. there's so many levels to this that. Um, but the bottom line was it was undeniable what God did mm. in this friendship. We did not choose this friendship. No. Let's talk about how no. we became friends. Okay, so it all. I wish we had harps. On this, <laughs> and I always said harps. It all happened in Dubai. In Dubai, it all started in Dubai. So. And we and we have yeah. for those who've seen the video, you've heard some of this story because we have a video called right. "Making Cling: The Series A Life Changed," right. which is Specs' testimony. Right. So some of this is in that video, but keep listening or watching because we're going to talk about what happened after the video. Right. But um, it's me. My life was changed. It, it happened it's, in it's Dubai. Me. Yeah. Um, so I was in Dubai. Um, we we had mutual friends that were on our anniversary. Yes. yes. Right. And so we were in Dubai. Um, you and Bill were there. Yes. I was there and I was going to work on a music video. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went out. I didn't have anybody to record the music video. And, and there are about 20 some people on this trip that right. were all there together celebrating this anniversary together. But this is a free during the day, it was free time, so right. we could have been anywhere right. in right. that area. But I had it in my mind where I wanted to shoot first. Mm -hmm. So um, we went out to this beautiful fountain with this beautiful painted wall. Mm -hmm. And you guys were sitting in my shop. Right. Like you guys <laughs> Bill were and I, we yeah. were just sitting on the step, enjoying the cool breeze. And I was and, like. Right. And he wanted to tell us to get up and move. I mean, I didn't want to tell him to get up and move, but I was like. <laughs> I mean, if you guys could sit down anywhere, uh, right? But it was could like you they just were, slide over. I mean, they were perfectly in the center in this, of in this the center picturesque, of the building. Yes. Yes. you know, place. Mm -hmm. And so, 
Um, but we went up and we started getting the shot ready. And then I recognized, I was like, oh, hey, that's you're from the, the trip, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. they're like, hey, from the trip. And they're like, what are you about to do? I said, record a music video. And she was just like, okay, but just just y'all? Like, who's going to film? Because he's with this other guy. Yeah. And he's going to film. They're on the song together. Right. So he's going to film him and other guys going to film Speck. And, I was. But there was nobody to film the two of them. Right. And and that was a problem that you knew. You, you yep. knew you had that problem yeah. that you said you wish you had somebody who right. could film the two of you. But he's up there. He, he's saying we'll make the best of it. Right. But I asked you, like, so who's going to film right. the and, two of you? I can't. I'm like, I can do it. So. I didn't know anything about Kim. All I knew is that she was an attorney, a licensed attorney that at, at was partner. So not a play one. And that she was an author mm-hmm. uh, and, and a Bible teacher. Mm-hmm. So those three things together equaled. She's not, not going to be filming. Be filming and she's not going to want to film a music video. Right, right. But she was, she was excited about it. Yeah. I, I loved it. I, Cause I have always loved photography and right. then I, told him for the last few years I've been on YouTube so I've been doing video I work behind the camera doing video work so I said hey and then, he, then you had the, um, the gimbal the gimbal so I was like oh I get to learn because I had seen videos on <laughs> gimbals I said I get to learn how to use a gimbal so I was having a right. blast and I was super super I kept trying to let her out of it I was like okay that seems over you can you can you can <laughs> like, go where's the next location I was like okay attorney <laughs> you can come to the next location if you want to see these rappers turn up and she was I mean she was there yeah and Bill and I were just like yep. in it yes, we yeah in it. I was, they were there we had a good time so about the Fourth location, um, we're sitting down waiting for the location to be ready. And then, you know, I'm just honestly astonished that she's still here, you know, for the filming. Mm-hmm. Ask her a little about it. And then out of nowhere, she tells, says, I, I'm work. I, God gave me an idea for a web series. Right. Because so God had given me an idea of the year before, like May 2017, mm. dropped this idea to do a web series, which I didn't know what that was. I had to Google it. Mm. And <laughs> I, I... I didn't know what a web series was either. I didn't. I, it was foreign. And I thought that at the time that God was saying I would be behind the camera, I would be filming. Mm. And um, so I just started praying about it, but nothing had come to me. So by the time I was at in Dubai, it was March of 2018. Mm. And I was telling when Speck asked about, you know, what, what is this you like the camera? You like to do this? And I said, well, you know, and actually, um, I feel like God has given me an idea to do a web series. Right. But it was last year. I think I might be crazy. Nothing has come of right. it. But, right, right, right. you know, there there is this idea. So we just started talking about this right. web series that I still didn't really know would come to be. And I was interested. You know, I have no idea why I was interested. <laughs> I don't get in, I don't get interested in just randomness, uh, you know. But mm-hmm. I was interested, um, and I remember I wanted to know what a web series was, yeah. what was going on. And then, of course, you responded like, "I don't know much about it, but this is what I know." And yeah, you did some nothing. research, and mm-hmm. like and that was it. We finished the, the video, and, and that was it. We had the rest of the trip just going here and there. Um, it wasn't just going here and there. That trip <laughs> was phenomenal. We were in Dubai. We were, we were in the car doing the sand dunes yes, and we yes. went to the tallest building yeah, and we went to the, yeah. that mug was, it was a lot. We had a good time. It was phenomenal. We but, but we, I mean, we saw each other, but that was it. It wasn't like, Oh, yeah. this friendship started. It was no, just like, no, not at all. It's whatever. So, not at all. Yeah. Um, so that was March. Then fast forward to April. Mm-hmm. I was working on, I was having my first clean conference and the conference was in June. So it's April. I'm working on the clean conference and I was working with Crystal who had been on the Dubai trip. She's the one who's in um, anniversary. It was, and she was helping me plan it. So I was supposed to go to her house on a Thursday to plan the clean conference mm-hmm. on Monday of that week. I'm doing my own planning for the conference and I get like the very next thing that I felt like God hadn't said anything about this web series for months and months mm-hmm. and months. And, and at that moment, I felt like God was saying the web series mm-hmm. is going to be filmed at the clean conference. Okay. And it was so remarkable that everything just stopped because I knew <laughs> that meant I was going to be in it. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, that was a whole issue in itself because I said, Lord, I don't act. You just trying to put me out there looking crazy. And, and you've then, never acted. Never acted. <laughs> never wanted to act. And then and then I said, then I'm going to need a filmmaker. It's two months away. I need a filmmaker. I need actors. I need all these things. But I need somebody, not not just a videographer, okay, <laughs> not right, just right. somebody that's going to set a camera nah. on the thing at the film at the clean nah. conference. I need a filmmaker. 
And so um, I said, Lord, if this is you, if I am not crazy and I'm really hearing from you, I need you to, I need you to send me a filmmaker. Right. That was Monday. Right. Thursday of that week, I go to Crystal's house to plan the conference Mm -hmm. and sitting in her living room are spec and Will Thomas, who had just directed mm-hmm. a music video right. the day before right. for her husband Flame. I wasn't still supposed to actually be there in St. Louis. I was there an extra two days um, at Flame's house um, because we were just decided to work on some extra production. So first of all, I wasn't even supposed to be there. Will was there just because he was um, he directed the video. And he was doing some stuff. So... Um, just crazy. Uh, Crystal needed to go get sandwiches or get mm-hmm. lunch. Mm-hmm. And she said, hey, you know Kim. Kim's coming over. Um, just talk to her for a second. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So immediately in my mind, the web series came back. To which my is mind. crazy. It just, yeah, it, it, which is crazy for me because it was just a conversation. But the web series came back and I, I was like, talk to Will. I felt like I needed to talk to Will. And so I, I pulled Will's coattail. Now you don't know, you guys don't know Will. Will's like this legendary director. <laughs> I mean, I mean, BET, MTV has over a hundred million streams to his credit. Like the dude, you know, ESPN. He's the goat. Yeah, he's the goat man. And but he doesn't get excited about stuff uh-uh. because people bring him stuff all the time. He is not excited about your vision. He's not going to be excited about the thing. You know, your your where you say you're going to go or or the visions of mm-hmm. grandeur. But I still felt like I was supposed to make this connection. And so I pulled Will's coattail. I said, this lady coming over. She's Christian. She wants to do a Christian series or something, a Christian TV show. I didn't know what to call it. Mm -hmm. But I was like, but she gives jokes. She's an author. It's not corny. The stuff should be good. And uh, I just introduced y'all. Yeah. 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 So I'm talking to Will and it was just the three of us there for some time talking about this web series that now is Mm. forming in my mind. And I didn't know, remember this had just come to me three days ago. So I couldn't tell Will anything. I didn't have a script, but I did say, (laughs) I think that if, if the lead character is me (laughs) and it's being filmed at the conference, then it's going to be about intimacy with God. And it's going to be something that's going on in this Bible teacher's life. Something dark is happening. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Will was interested and by the, which is, <laughs> which was crazy. crazy. I know that in hindsight, it was crazy. And by the end of that time, that day, Will said, I am interested in doing this. I need to go home though and see if my calendar is free. I have my, my main calendar is at home. I won't know till Monday right, right, right. if I'm free. So I go home and that weekend, the Lord is saying, work on the script. And I said, well, Lord, I don't know if Will is available yet. <laughs> and, and, and the Holy Spirit was like, I would not have had him sitting in the living room when you came over there if he was not going right. to be available. Right, Walk right. by faith and work on the script. <laughs> oh, oh, you know what? On that, okay, something just occurred to me today. Uh-huh. Okay. It had not occurred to me before. Okay. This is crazy. About Will in directing. Uh-huh. When you told me about the idea of Dubai, you said at that point, you thought you were going to direct it, right? Right, right. But I didn't know that because I wouldn't have ever tried to connect you with the director. So it was just a crazy that when you pitched me the idea yeah. that you thought you were going to be I the director, totally thought but that, yeah. God knew that, that you so weren't at that time before he revealed yes. it to you. Yes, yes. He already knew. And then I was sitting there with Will, with the director that you didn't even know. Because you wouldn't needed. have even mentioned it to Will. No, because I would have been I like, going to why would it? I step on your toes? Wow. Would... Right. Wow. So it, it, it's, it's just That phenomenal. was amazing. Right. That was amazing. And, and it's also that, also I want to bring, bring about just as part of the story of saying why, you know, how we became friends. Mm-hmm. When you say you three were talking, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't me. It wasn't, I wasn't up there talking. I introduced them and then I went back down yeah. oh, to the basement. I thought that was it. I had... I didn't even know if I'd ever talked to Kim again in my life. You know, I just it did the introduction. I felt like the Lord was leading. We went back downstairs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Crystal, Will, mm-hmm. and I mm-hmm. talking the whole time. But so then Monday comes and Will indeed says that he is free and he can film it. He said, let's go. It's That's on. also not normal. That right, you can, for him to be free two months out yeah. just was crazy. Just for a whole all week. Of, there was so uh, many things that God was doing. So mm-hmm. he said, let's go. So I had been, when I was working on the script over that weekend, I had been praying about who would be my lead character because as I was writing the script, Ricky, who is my character, had a teen sweetheart. So I said, Lord, who would be my 
Teen Sweetheart. I don't know any actors. Like, you have <laughs> just thrown all of this at me. I have nothing. Who is, how do I get an actor? And who's going to play this character? And just immediately, <laughs> Spec came into my into my mind. Right. And I said, Spec? <laughs> Why would he be in the series? Right. Like, he's a music producer. He is super busy. He doesn't have time for this. Why All would of he that even? Was true. Why, right. Why would he even want to do this? And so I just thought it was ridiculous. But I said, okay, let me call Crystal. I said, Crystal, you know, I was praying about who would play my teen, teen sweetheart. And I feel like Speck came to mind. Mm. And what do you think he would say? And she said, I think he would do it. I think he would actually want to do it and she said yeah. you should ask him so she gives me your phone number and i text you and i say right. i have this weird question all right so that was it now understand i don't really care about texts like that mm -hmm. and i normally wouldn't text back for a while which mm -hmm. you thought you were surprised that i text back yeah. so quick yeah because i was like yeah what's up yeah you know what i'm saying and again i didn't really even know you like that right right but i think that was that was part of what God did. For mm -hmm. some reason, when I thought of Kling, when I thought of the ministry you were doing, mm -hmm. I knew it was anointed. Mm. I had this respect for it. Mm -hmm. I just know it was God. God led me like, pay attention to this. Mm. You know, this is important to me. And so even though you weren't texting me about any money, Right. There was right. no profit in it. Mm -hmm. You didn't say I have a job or any work. <laughs> right. Because usually right. that's the only thing that makes me text back. Mm -hmm. If it's not my family, mm -hmm. I still was like, yeah, what's up? Yep. You know? And so we talked and I told him I was thinking about him being in the clean series. And he, he said, what part? <laughs> right, <laughs> so right, right. He was like, what you what you trying to get me to do? Mm -hmm. So I said, you would play my teen sweetheart. So he agreed to do it and then said, that he had always wanted to act. And but that blew me away. It's just, that's just crazy. Because, again, you didn't know. Nope. And then the fact that you didn't even ask, like, God put it, yep. it in your mind. But I had. I had acted in high school. I was in performing arts in college. Mm -hmm. And I had always wanted to act. But um, I got the best internship doing music production. Mm -hmm. So that's the path I took. Mm -hmm. But I would always really wanted to. So when I got this call... Mm -hmm. I mean, I was, I was just like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, right. It so, was phenomenal. fast forward a couple of weeks later, I am mm. now writing this script. I'm really into writing it because, again, this conference is two months away, and he's his character. I wanted to build off of him because the character was going to be mm. a music producer. So, I wanted um, him to feel comfortable with playing the role, and so I said, you know, let's can I interview you and right. just just learn about a music producer's life and just. Mm just ask you a few questions that I can then incorporate maybe into the character. And mm -hmm. so we get on the phone and Man, this <laughs> start call, asking questions about this call, his life. <laughs> no, you guys don't understand. This call, <laughs> I've never had a significant conversation with you before. No. This call, this is again, God working. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I was just led and I don't trust anybody like this, mm -hmm. but I was just led to just share. Mm -hmm. So you were just asking regular questions. Yeah, I was like, and how many siblings? And uh, uh, was, <laughs> like, and how did you get into producing music? My kind of answers thing. were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was revealing all kinds of stuff. You started talking about how you comp compartmentalize so, your life. So that's the point. The point is, I don't know you from Adam. Right. I already have like my life is super compartmentalized. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, you know, and I was telling you that day, which mm -hmm. is again, why am I telling you? But mm -hmm. I was like, you know, this person, they know this and that's all they know. Mm -hmm. And they don't know this person. Mm -hmm. I know this person knows this person. Mm -hmm. So they're allowed to know this, but not this. Mm -hmm. And when I go here, then this is, is here because you know, blah, blah, blah. So. And I'm listening like, okay. Right, right, right. Huh? Okay. Yeah, right. Like I, you know, I wasn't going to, say anything more than that but mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. he was telling me all kinds of uh, but I did ask a couple of questions just to understand what he was saying and you were super honest I and then you were surprised that you were yeah. super honest so I would give an answer and then I'd be like why did I just say that <laughs> I was like I would never say that I don't know why I said that and I was like uh, you're not supposed to know that right right but, nobody else right, knows that right so you weren't even prying mm -mm. but again I just believe that God already, ha I mean, I cannot wait to the podcast. We talk about Jonathan and David mm -hmm. because 
that it was divine. Mm-hmm. I know it was divine. God, was. God had just done something special. And yeah, he was like, it is time. It's time. To unearth all this stuff that is in your life and heart. And it's, it's coming out whether mm-hmm. you like it or not. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me say that then. So you didn't know it, mm-hmm. but about the compartmentalization and about mm-hmm. all that the week before, um, I had cried out to God and it wasn't just a prayer. It was a cry. It was a cry out to God. And I, it, it sounded like this, God, if you can get me out of all this entanglement, I, whatever you have to do, if you can do it, I will not get back in. Mm-hmm. Little did I know you, you, you need God's power. You can't mm-hmm. make even that statement. You need right. God's power to keep you. Right. I was like, God, if you just give me out, I was like, I'm tired of lying. I'm tired of being deceptive. I'm tired of compartmentalizing and have having multiple lives. I'm tired of, of having to be different people in different places at different areas. I'm just tired of this whole life, this, this web I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I said, I just want to be honest and live. And I thought I was doing it for a, a, a righteous purpose. Um, again, you go watch the, the video. Yeah, um, I was like, you want to be honest, huh? Clint, yeah. Yeah. You go watch the video, <laughs> a life change. Um, uh, cause that was like the first outward, you know, mm-hmm. thing that we'll, you know, you guys can watch that and we'll cover that. But, um, so it was for, it was for my kids. Yes. That's why I want I want to say yes, that. I want to yes. say that. I, I didn't just decide I'm going to be a bad guy and I start lying. I didn't decide I was going to be a, a bad guy to start deceiving and compartmentalizing it. All I had to do with not wanting to lose contact with my kids. And maybe, you know, we're going to unpack that later, but um, I had made my kids an idol and, it, and I put my kids above trusting God and it had just got, led me into a life of just entanglement and deception. Mm-hmm. And I, I had cried out and I didn't know it, but this was the first step. Mm-hmm. I was, I cried out to God. God was like, Oh, I'm already working on it. Just get this call. Let's yep. start there. Yep. Already <laughs> working. And after that call, I would say it was about three weeks later, mm. we had another conversation. And by this time, we had been talking more frequently about the series, about the music. Mm. We had started talking about the music and right. writing music. And so we were having conversations. And so I knew him a little bit better. Um, and so we had this conversation and and it just got to a point where mm. I'm like, how do you reconcile okay, I'll, this? I'll stop you. I'll stop that? you. I appreciate you. You're respecting my story and respecting the thing, but I'll, it's my story so I can be honest. So I was a promiscuous man and um, I was still a, around the church people and around Christians um, or people who claim to be Christians. But honestly, everybody in my circle, you know, they would sleep with people and um, it wasn't weird. It wasn't not normal. It was very normalized. And I didn't really connect the fact that some things were cool and some things weren't. It was just like, well, I'm not perfect. And I was just, you know, saying, you know, I mean, this is how this is. And then Kim was like, okay, so how do you reconcile that? And I had never encountered somebody who at the risk of a, you know, a relationship being ruined or, you know, like this work relationship would uh, confront me like that. That was like weird. I was like, are you serious? It right just really, the question just really, it was just nothing but the Holy Spirit. Cause I'm listening to him talk and it just came out. The Holy Spirit was like, ask him, like, how do you reconcile having sex right. with being a Christian? Yeah. And I was like, well, because, um, and I was thinking about Bible verses. I said, well, you know what? I hear God. And I was like, and, and I didn't tell you mm-hmm. I had just cried out to God. Mm-hmm. And so I was listening to his voice for the first time and mm-hmm. trying to really talk to him. And said, so I said, I heard God, when he wants me to stop, he'll tell me mm-hmm. that's now. Mm-hmm. I heard it so clearly. God was, said that out loud. Yeah, God, said, I said, I, in my, th- I said, that's now. Mm-hmm. That is now. And you said, that, I'm going to be celibate. I said, yeah, I, I said, what? I said, all right, I'm going to be celibate. <laughs> yeah, I said, I'm going to be celibate. I said, right. You're like, what? I was like, yeah, right now I'm going to be celibate. I made it from now on. I was like, okay. And so, but that decision, neither one of us knew would just 
begin a whole journey yeah. of walking that out. I didn't know I would have anything to do with the journey. Yeah. I mean, so at this point, we're we get to a month later, we get to the clean conference, and we are filming, and then because by so by being obedient to God. To yeah. challenge me yeah. on my iniquity that mm-hmm. I was just so flipping about and being like, no, nah, this is what I do. I always do this. And God instructed you. He's like, challenge him. That's not okay. Stand up, challenge it. By doing that, you didn't know what you were signing I up for. I did not know. You talking about bait and switch. Yeah, bait and switch. <laughs> With that video, you, you talking didn't. about bait. That was a bait and switch for me. You didn't know what you were signing up for. We start, we start doing, actually filming the clean series, and we mm-hmm. cl- filmed in a couple of locations, and then we start working on the soundtrack. And as we're doing all these things, we're having conversations, and I'm the only one who knows what he is <laughs> endeavoring to do. So he's yeah. telling me about... Like challenges, struggles. Um, um, how do I do this? Whether this is hard, I don't get this. And, right. And you are the only per. You have to like at that point if you choose to just be out. I don't know what to do. Like, and I, I and I'm know. talking to you anyway. But right. every time we would talk about something having to do with the series, yeah, something else. It was like Lord, really, like. Why am I? It was a what series. is going on? Like he he would just something would come up and and I'd be like. What's going on? And then right, that would just start unpacking right. a whole thing. It was, it and, was, and it was I, miraculous. He did. The Lord was like, "You're going to walk with him through this." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you are going to do it. Yeah, right. I mean, that the the thing was that you know the series forced us to have to talk all the time. Yeah. It wasn't about the series though, right? Right, the, because the Lord was like that. <laughs> that was a bait and switch. That was the bait and switch. Him being in this series, he thought it was because he wanted to act. Right, right, right. right. And I, yeah, go ahead. I just have to say one thing: the Lord revealed like much later mm. was when he first dropped this cling series in my heart. Mm. He had spec in mind way back in 2017, and if this series did not impact anybody else, yeah. He did it for spec. He went after the one, you know, talk about the 99 and the oh. shepherd leaves and goes after the one sheep. He, God did this for the one. No, this is, th- no, this is real. Um, like God used you. You kept it 100. You, you gave me the answers that I didn't want to hear. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, there were things like, you know, I really want to get out of this situation. you be like, well, then get out of it. I'm like, no, 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 but it can't, you can't be that easy. Cause then there's going to be like, there's, there's emotions and there's things and there's nuances. And you were like blocker. Yeah. Yeah. Blocker. Yeah, blocker. <laughs> devil ain't, the devil is not nuanced. Is they? And, and, and you know what? Y'all know the DMS do not be nuanced. No. When the devil be getting at you in the DMS, it, it do not be nuanced. But you know, I was trying to nuance. Because at this back. point, he has a commitment to be celibate. Right. Right. And I was. And, and I, he was finding out how hard that commitment was. Yeah. 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 And of course, how much the enemy hated that commitment. Right, right. So, um, yeah, I didn't want a pity pat answer. You didn't give it to me, but I. You know what? I did. I actually did want pity pet answers. I did want easy way out. Yeah. I did want, you know, that's okay. Just take your time with it. It'll all come. Yeah. Yeah. But now where mm-hmm. I am now with mm-hmm. a renewed mind, mm-hmm. that's exactly what I needed. Yeah. Because he would be like, you are so mean. Yeah. You're heck of mean. Like what you think, you think I should do that or what you're what, what? That right. wouldn't be nice. I'm like, you can't be nice with sin. Yeah, you, you be killing sin or sin yeah, will be killing you. Yeah, John Owen. John so Owen. Shout I was out. giving him John Owen. I was yeah, like, 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 what is it? Yeah. You can't play with sin. It was, like, but, sin is trying to kill you and you trying to be nice. But he was saying I true. was mean. He didn't understand it. You do right. now. Right, right, right. But yeah, now. because I was dealing, I was thinking I was dealing with people. Mm-hmm. Right. You're and I really am a nice guy. So mm-hmm. I was dealing with people, but. Mm-hmm. I'm not dealing with people. I'm dealing with the sin in people. Yes. I'm dealing with the unrenewed man in people. Yes. And those people were, were dealing with the unrenewed man in me. And you just dealing straight up with the enemy. And you're like, right. You know, and so you wrestle not against it, flesh and blood. No, that's real. So, so, so praise God. Like I was, I was, I was trying to get easy ways out. And I was trying to get understanding. I knew Kim was a Bible teacher. Mm-hmm. And that was another thing I knew God did because mm-hmm. I am so cynical because mm-hmm. I've been around 
the church culture all my life in different aspects that I'm so cynical. I've seen so much, Mm -hmm. but God sent a Bible teacher who kept it 100 Mm -hmm. and that I respected. And I respected you because of that first challenge. Mm -hmm. I respected you because you responded unlike anyone else that I've ever confided with. Mm. Everybody else was always pity pat. I understand. That's okay. And you were just like, how do you reconcile that? And that made me respect you. I actually said, I don't even think I've ever met a Christian like you. And that, in- yeah. that actually includes. <laughs> you were like, that. are there people like you out yeah, there? There people. are plenty of people. I, was like, I don't, I don't know. Them. But that's how we became friends. Mm-hmm. We became friends. Not through, through the hard places. Through the, I mean, there was the, nothing warm and fuzzy about no, it. No, through the impossible. Through places. the impossible, hard, yeah. sacrificial. Yeah, you getting on my nerves, right. and I'm getting on your nerves. Places, and, I, and I'm just like, I'm just like, I know I asked you, like, what would God say about this, and you are telling me, but I don't like that, and I need you just to not call me or not answer me or, Oh, I'm sorry. We have to do this series. So you have to call me and I have to talk to you and I have to, you know, I've made this commitment out of my mouth. I'm going to be celibate. And now I'm in front of you all the time. Right. And it's just uncomfortable. And, 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 and and can we just talk about the fact that one of the reasons that we knew God was in this mm -hmm. was because so often we wanted to walk away and it just, and everything came to a head. Oh well, yeah, maybe. at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so because at the clean conference, like God told me, go on record, tell Kim that at one point you want to just go get on camera and tell a testimony. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. But I told Kim, and she didn't forget. And that's what that. <laughs> but video I said is. you don't have to do it. Right, and I was like, but I I know that I need to do it. God's telling mm-hmm. me, and it lined up biblically with so many things that I was telling me. You know, that's like the testimony. You know, what testimony mm-hmm. do, and then the confession. You know, and you, you uh, we're ministering in that video too. If you watch the video, you mm-hmm. heard him say, you heard Speck say that he was done with um, sex, that he was done with lying and deception, that he was done with all of these things, and which I hundred percent absolutely meant and absolutely. thought that I can. Maintain Absolutely. that he in my own it. power. He meant that. Right. And then he quickly found out that he could not do it in his own strength. No, you can't do it in your own strength. So um, just after that video, I was I, I was 100 percent committed to that. And, I, you know, the testimony was great. And, you know, I just found out that it was a it, it was a journey of depending on God because I still thought that I had the power to do anything. Mm-hmm. So. I fell, I slipped, I lied to you about it, mm-hmm. which was... Now, you might say, well, what does it matter if he lied to you about it? But I was literally his accountability well, partner. Yeah, so and, and so we had talked about so many things leading up to that moment right. that, um, you know, you know how you... It's like somebody coming out of an addiction. Right. And, and you're trying to say... These are the warnings like you can't put yourself mm. in this situation or that situation and you have to do X, Y and Z. And um, and he was like, no, I'm cool. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. So she, so again, as a, a person who is, you know, toiling and who I'm calling on to be like, what do I do in this situation? What do I do in this situation? And, you know, and, you know, she's available and available. Then, you know, I. To go off and do something, I'm just like, she's being ridiculous, and I'm going to put myself in this situation, and it went bad. So when she found out that, like, all the energy and the time that she was, you know, putting in and the question answering and all that. Yeah, I was like, Lord, I do not have time for this. Like, for real, If he ain't going to be serious. I really have a life. Mm -hmm. I have things to do. Uh I, I don't. I don't have time for this. I don't. I, at one point I was like, Lord, I don't care what he does. All right. And why I was, did you put him in my path? Right. I don't I care like, what he does. Stop burdening right, me. Right, right, the right. Lord would literally burden right. my heart. I would right. be like, do what you want. That's between you and the Lord. Right. I don't care. Right. And then the Lord would burden me. Like you just going to leave him like that. To pray for him. You're just going to leave him and, like that. You're just going to leave him. Talk to him. I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh, are right. you serious? Right. Right. And, and then conversely, you know, I was just like, 
why does she care right. so much? Like I, know, I didn't know that there was so much healing taking place yeah, just there, in that. Like the Lord was like, you are not going to walk away. That was part of the gospel friendship because he had been hurt by people walking away and he didn't mm-hmm. trust anybody. And I didn't know how pivotal it was that the Lord was saying, no, you're mm-hmm. not going to walk away. He needs to know that you're going to walk with him sacrificially he needs to he needs to know what true agape love is right 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 not conditional which is right. what led up to me just having this thing is there's no such thing as friends right but um, so this one yeah. day yeah this so this one day, day. and all yeah and i was and so you know you were like like god revealed to you that i was lying it was, so- it was just out of nowhere. It was like, so I'm just like, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, that, that situation's <laughs> over. It's done. And then she calls me. She's like, I, I believe like the Lord was like saying that, like you were lying about this. And I was just like, it, it, the Lord. I was so it, upset and so mad, else. but I was, I was like, yes, I was. And like, I, I wish the Lord would have done stuff like that with my kids. He was revealing stuff about spec. So, I, and I was like, yes, I was. So cool. So I know this is the end and we don't. Yeah, have to, he was I like, guess, so I know that. I know you're not, you know, we're not going to be friends We're anymore. not in friends. It's cool. Have a good life. Bye. And that's actually what you were thinking at the that's time. That's what I'm, yeah, that's what I was you thinking. You were just like, time. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you were yep. like, you don't have yep. time for it. Yeah. Um, but that was a pivotal day. Um, you didn't. I, what you, you were on the treadmill, right? You remember that? Yeah. So you, yeah, you are, you were on the treadmill and you were listening to a song. I believe it was by Tripoli. About bear. About bear. Bear with you. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. And you would, you would. Lord took me to Ephesians. Took you to Mm -hmm. Ephesians. Right. And talking about bearing with your brother. Mm -hmm. And so I think you. I was like, man. (laughs) And it was a verse that had bear, bearing with one another and, um, Loving one another and bearing with one another. So it was that agape love yeah. and, and bearing, bearing with loving one. through hardship. Yes. And so I was so mad. Yep. Because I knew it was the Lord. I was like, I am done. It was crazy. What is happening? Man. So when you called back, it was a very hard conversation, very long conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just knew the whole time. I was like, this is my life. And again, I had been hurt really, really bad. And I didn't really know how bad I'd been hurt when I was like 18 years old. And I was just like, this is over. I'm used to this. This is yeah. fine. You know, people expect me to be perfect. And if I can't be perfect, I mess up one time. But, then, but yeah. what was pivotal was you were like, you know, you were saying that I'm not perfect. I'm not going to do everything. right. I said, it's not about you being perfect. It was about you lying. Like, you didn't have to lie. I know you're not perfect. Uh, so we're going back yeah, and forth. Cause I was like, yeah, because I was like. No, I have to lie because if I tell you that I made a mistake that I didn't want to make, then it's over anyway. It's better to keep you in the dark right, so you right. think I'm perfect so you right. stay around. Right. And, right. and it was just so, like, in my mind, it was so warped. I was like, how? nobody is uh, perfect. Nobody expects you to be perfect. That's not true. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> everybody so, expects but, me but, to be perfect. But as we had this conversation, <laughs> right. um, he just was getting emotional. I was getting emotional. And I was like, before you said what she's about to say is because I kept saying no I have to lie I yeah. have to for the sake yeah. of this relationship for the sake yeah. of my kids relationship I have to lie yeah. and so I know she was yeah but, and I said are you do you think you're actually saved like have you ever had a moment where you said the sinner's prayer, not because it's some magical prayer, but mm-hmm. I was trying to see if he could pinpoint a time where he had repented and giving, given his life intentionally to the Lord. If he had just mm-hmm. really had that moment of brokenness and giving his life to Jesus. And he said, I said, I thought for a long time. I said, no, I grew up in church. I was a kid. I saw altar calls and then I did, you know, I was a junior deacon and I went through that and then I was in different ministries and different churches. And, you know, I believe, you know, you know, I was working and I I loved the Lord. I believed I loved the Lord, but I was like, no, I've actually never, I've gone to the altar for prayer, but I said, he's crying at this point. Yeah. I'm just totally bawling. bawling. I was like, Mm -hmm. 
And again, at that point, you did not know that at the beginning of this, I had cried out to the Lord and said, whatever it takes, what do I need to do Mm -hmm. to become untangled? Mm -hmm. I did not want this. I didn't know it was going to take all this. Yeah. But I had cried out to God and so I said, no. And I was just like, am I actually about to get saved right now? Like mm. after all I've been through. It was all my such life? uh so I prayed with him mm-hmm. on yeah. the call and we were both in tears. And I'm giving my life to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And it was just such a miraculous moment. Just yeah, And we recognized the weight of that moment. Like it was all for this moment. Yep. Everything that has happened was leading up to this moment. The Lord got a hold of your life. Mm. He had you on camera talking about how Told me your life camera. was going to change. You weren't going to do this and you weren't going to do that. And then he wanted you to see that you could I not, did not do that power. I did not in power. your own power, that you needed the power of Christ. You needed to be oh. saved. And, um, Man. And the Lord delivered you Lord delivered in me. such a strong way through this friendship. friendship. And he came and got me. It was just a and got me. miracle, and it was amazing. And so you can't. Ar- so here's the thing. So that's the you can't argue with that. So there's two things that are pivotal, I believe, for this podcast to say. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a mentoring situation. No. By it wasn't it, a discipleship no, situation. No, it was it was a fr- it was a friendship yeah. by any means. Yeah. And I was saved through that friendship mm-hmm. and my life was changed through that friendship. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about everything changed. Yes. Everything changed. I know you could a lot of people listening might not realize, but I'm just trying to tell you I can't get into every miracle that happened mm-hmm. after that time. We'll get into some of that yeah, in we, future yeah. podcasts. But everything changed. And you can't argue with that. And God did it through the friendship. The amazing thing at that point was I then became your spiritual mom. Yeah. And I remember Uh, having a conversation with you where I said, I hope, I hope that you don't take this the wrong way. I hope, mm -hmm. I hope you don't think this is belittling you, but I just see you as a kid sometimes, meaning I could Mm -hmm. see the hurts that he had from his childhood. And I could see like, in some of the things he would say, I could just see that the healing that he needed. And it, it, and we talked about like the dynamic felt like a mother son. It was, no, and it, 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 it was, was weird was. to say, but once we said it, we were like, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It's like a mother uh-huh. son. And, and it's funny. Cause on the series, we, we play teen sweethearts, you know, and, and uh, all that, right. but really it's more like well, mother life. son. Yeah. And, um, and so God just gave me a heart to, to see into his heart and to see mm. the hurts and to see what he needed healing from. And just, I would just, no little things. So we talked about the one another versus encourage one another. I would see where if I would, you know, even if we're listening to music, something, he sent me a track and, and if I'm thinking to myself, Oh my goodness, this is so dope. Mm. The Holy spirit would be like, text him and tell him it's dope. Encourage him. And I would do right. that and he would just light up. Well, be, and, and she would have no idea. Like he needed that. Yeah. She would have no idea. Like, I mean, like, this is one thing I can say. Like, I knew I was gifted to go into music and um, I never had anybody to encourage me. As a matter of fact, um, the encouragement that came from, you know, the, the my parental structure at the time was you can do anything you want except that. We don't understand that. I don't know how you're going to make any money from that. And I knew that that's what I was supposed to be doing. I knew that I was anointed for it and I, to live successfully as a producer, but still always desiring, you know, my parents. Yes. My mother's, I am proud of you. You know, you made a good decision and you made never, just never got that. Mm -hmm. Just, and so for you, like as a spiritual mother to just be like, yeah, here, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had just so much healing from so many other places that, you know, you, you just didn't, no. Right. And um, again, it's just God doing it through the friendship, but on a miraculous level. It's not like we're just right. like, you know, uh, you know, just 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 skipping through the the, no. the, the tulip field. No. You know, this is no. this is work. It's this ministry. Friendship. Yes, it's gospel. Ministry yeah. Are in Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he will prune. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. He will dredge up all the ugly stuff and he will teach you. I mean, I, he's yeah. grown me a lot mm. through this friendship. But we are here to talk about what a gospel friendship is about because we have walked out and are still walking out a gospel right. friendship where the gospel is alive and active, where, you know, the friendship is in Christ and we have seen him do miracles. We have seen him um, oh bring healing, deliverance, oh and just so much. And so it's our prayer that through this podcast, we can talk about what a gospel friendship is. We'll get yeah. more into that in the next podcast. What is a gospel friendship? What is what, what is required? And um, share more of our story. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's lots more stories. Lots, lots more. Because it that was not it. <laughs> we had other times where I was like, I am done. Are you serious? Right. Like really? Right. And I perpetually am done. Yes. And, no, I, I like, annoy no. him. No, I, I, like, I am the true spiritual mom yeah. who annoys him. Yeah, my gosh. But <laughs> it, it, but but as God you know what continues as well as the annoyance? Mm-hmm. The miracles. The miracles. I they, mean, they continue. No, I'm telling you guys, like miracles we'll yes. get into that but yes. miracles and so um also what i learned is this cling ministry that has saved my soul this cling ministry that has cleaned my life up it really teaches a faith walk listening mm-hmm. to god intimacy with god but listening to god and it has driven and led decisions that have totally brought me a peace Mm-hmm. above my soul and above oh, yeah. Your my whole kids. life has been turned it just brought me a peace that I've never thought I have by the most ridiculous things that I felt God was leading me to do and mm-hmm. just ended up being amazing mm-hmm. so just can't wait to share more mm-hmm. and share what God will do through a friendship if you keep him first amen thank you so much for watching listening we hope that you subscribe Wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe on YouTube and follow Gospel Friendship. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Gospel Friendship. Thanks so much for joining us. We would love it if you would rate and review the show on iTunes. Also, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already, as well as your favorite podcast player. And if you want to go behind the scenes of this friendship, including all kinds of bonus content, check us out on Patreon. We would love your support. And we would love to hear your thoughts at gospelfriendshippodcast at gmail.com. We'll see you soon on the next Gospel Friendship Podcast.